<laughs> good morning, church. It is good to spend this time on Thursday morning with you as a weekly devotional. Uh, my name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church for at least another week. And so um, we have this time of uh, ending and times of beginnings. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today was this idea of going through transition in our lives and how sometimes things happen that are transition us from one uh, one idea to another or from one leadership to another. And that's what we're seeing here. But uh, I'm hoping that transition also is something that's positive for people, gives them an opportunity to think about new things. Um, I was contemplating this idea of what I'd say about transition, and I thought of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43. Isaiah writes, Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now, the Israelites that Isaiah was writing to, of course, needed encouragement, right? Because God was doing something through them that uh, many times caused them to grumble and turn away from God because they were, they were struggling with living in the wilderness and not knowing what was next. And uh, I can't even imagine wandering for 40 years, not sure what was uh, going to be our final outcome. But they had to have faith that God was doing a new thing and was helping them through this difficult time. And so I was thinking about that topic and, and that there's God's promises are all through Scripture. If you read the Scripture, you read about God's promises in so many different ways. Uh, one of the places we see about God's promises is in Jesus' teaching through parables. And that's what we're focusing on in worship the last few weeks, and we'll continue for this next couple of Sundays, teaching um, some of the parables of Jesus. And one of the beautiful things about parables is that they give you a deeper understanding of something through symbolism. They use symbolism and um, metaphor in order to help us to see beyond maybe a, a very concrete interpretation, which is helpful, I think, because because God is mysterious, right? God is mysterious, and there's many things about God we don't understand. But the uh, images that are derived through metaphor and through parable really, I think, help us to see deeper into that topic. So I had a couple of songs I wanted to sing for you today. You get a bonus. Normally I only do one song, but you get two today. Uh, the first one is a song that we're going to sing this Sunday at church, and I want to kind of review it for you to, for you hear it now. Uh, it's called You Are the Seed, and it's a, it was written in Spanish by a, a priest named Cesaro Gabrain, and I don't pronounce Spanish correctly, So, but he wrote this in 1979. And it what it does is it, reviews several different images from um, parables. And I'm going to read some of the words before I sing it so you get this idea of what it's about. It says, you are the seed that will grow a new sprout. And that's, we're talking about uh, the planting of seeds and how they grow mysteriously, really. We don't know how all that happens. I guess you could ask a, a botanist and they could explain more about that. But, but for most of us, it's a much of a mystery how this happens. But it talks about you are a seed that will grow a new sprout. You are a star that will shine in the night. You are the yeast and a small grain of salt, a beacon to glow in the dark. So these are all images that are used in Jesus' teaching. You are the dawn that will bring a new day. You are the wheat that will bear golden grain. You are a sting and a soft, gentle touch, my witness wherever you go. And so this is really encouraging us to be the people that God calls us to be, that uh, Sometimes the little things we do make a huge difference for people. Uh, like it talks about, you're the yeast, and they talk about the scriptures. And Jesus uses that as an image that a, a little bit of yeast will raise a whole batch of dough, right? And those of you that are bakers know about that. Or a small grain of salt. Like there's things that you make, if you don't put the salt in there, it doesn't work, right? Some of your recipes, if the salt's left out, it doesn't uh, rise or it doesn't become the product that you hope for it to be. Verse 2 is, uh, you are a flame that will light in the dark. We talk about the flame representing not only God's Holy Spirit, but the light to the world. Um, you are a flame that will light in the dark, sending sparkles of hope, faith, and love. Now, of course, this, there's some poetry going on here. You are the shepherds to lead the whole world through valleys and pastures of peace. We talk about God being the, the good shepherd, and then we are to emulate God, right, and help others to find the ways to God as well. You're the friend that we chose, that I chose for myself, the work that I want to proclaim. 
through the new kingdom built on a rock where justice and truth always reign. So it's talking not only about us, but also about, about God being the, the rock. Uh, Jesus is the rock on which the kingdom is built. And so uh, let me sing this for you. You are the seed, and I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to sing it in English. See, it's written in, in, in the uh, hymnal. It's actually in Spanish, but there's English translation there. You are the seed that will grow and you sprout. You're a star that will shine in the night. You are the yeast and a small grain of salt, a beacon to glow in the dark. You are the dawn that will bring a new day. touch my witness wherever you go. Oh, my friends, go to the world, proclaiming love to all. Messengers of my forgiving peace, the eternal love. Be my friends, a loyal witness from the dead I arose. Oh, I'll be with you forever. and leave the whole world through valleys and pastures of peace. You are the friend that I chose for myself, the work that I want to proclaim. You are the new kingdom built on a rock where justice and truth always reign. Oh, my friends, go to the world proclaiming of my forgiving peace, the eternal love. Be my friends, a loyal witness from the dead I arose. Oh, I'll be with you forever till the end of the world. You are the life that will nurture the plant. You're the waves in the turbulent sea. Yesterday Jesus beginning to rise, a new loaf of bread it will yield. There is no place for a city to hide, nor a mountain can cover its might. May your good deeds show a world in despair, a path that will lead all to God. Oh, my friends, go oh, to the world, proclaiming love to Messengers of my forgiving peace, the eternal love. Be my friends, a loyal witness from the dead I arose. Oh, I'll be with you forever till the end of the world. Oh, I'll be with you forever. the seed and uh, Jesus is, of course that represents the seed but then we are to extend that work right we are to be emulators of Jesus and do the things that Jesus calls us to do to bring love to the world and help others to see that God truly loves them and God is with us wherever we go and that's that's sometimes hard right because sometimes it seems like that God is distant or not um, not paying attention to our prayers and yet God is there we know that as close as our breath and the second song I want to sing is one of my favorites from the hymnal. It came out in the late 80s, so it came out actually just in time to be published in the United Methodist Hymnal in 89. It was, it was written in 80, 1986, and it was written by a composer named Natalie Sleeth. And um, many of you know, for many years I was a church choir director, and much of the music that's written for choral music in that um, period of time, in the late 80s and 90s, um, and even into the 2000s were written by Natalie Sleeth and she has a way with words and melody that are simplistic and yet profound and that's what makes a good song I think because the merger of melody and words just really um, 
make it magical almost the, the connection between the two um, the the words to him a promise you probably know this him a promise um, but it, it, it talks about hope uh, let me read the words just to remind you in the bulb there's a flower I always think that's interesting, right? You plant the bulbs and they look like nothing, but they come up with beautiful flowers. And the seed, an apple tree, the whole apple tree can come from a seed or any kind of tree. In cocoon, a hidden promise, we talk about butterflies transforming from caterpillars. Um, in the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be. That's something that we always look forward to, right? When the winter starts to wind down and the spring is coming. And it's unrevealed until it's season is the last line, something God alone can see. So this hope that we have through God, something that God knows, uh, and yet we, we sometimes struggle to, to, to accept and to fully put our trust that God will deliver us uh, over in time. Um, so let me read or sing for you a hymn of promise, and I hope that you enjoy it. Both of these songs will be in worship this Sunday, so just a little preview for that. In the bowl there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoon a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until this season, something God alone can see. From the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our death the resurrection. At the last of victory, unrevealed until this season, something God alone can see. That last line gives me a lot of hope. In the end is our beginning, in our time, infinity. In our doubt, there is believing in our life, eternity. In our death, a resurrection at the last of victory, unrevealed until a season, something only God can see. Well, I pray that you continue to rely on God, that you know that God can see what is not yet revealed to us, and uh, that we have hope and encouragement, and uh, as we go through this period of transition, that each of you will see how God's involved and how God's hand moves mightily each and every day. Go in peace and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.